station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, space station here. We're ready for the event. And Houston Chronicle, this is Mission Control Houston. Please go ahead and call station for a voice check. Okay, this is Eric Berger. Eric Berger, Mike Fossum with you, loud and clear. Hey, Mike, good morning. How are you? Hey, I'm living the dream. How about you? <laughs> well, I'm not quite that high but I, in space, but I appreciate that. So I want to start with a, an important question, Mike. Uh, your, Twitter hand, your Twitter handle is Aggie, or Astro Aggie, and uh, so I know you're a big fan. Uh, but your Aggies have blown three second-half double-digit leads this year. Uh, should the coach be fired? Absolutely not. He's doing a great job when you're uh, when you're just a, a handful of points away from from uh, you know three wins. You know a lot of things are going right. Uh, talk about the technology that you have in space uh, to to be able to watch football games. Is it something that has to be uploaded to you, or, or are you able to watch the games when you have some time off? How does that work? Uh, there's several different ways of doing it. One is they can send it up live if it's on television and, and uh, readily available. They can ship it up uh, when we have the right kind of satellite coverage up here. And we've watched a little bit that way. We catch some news sometimes. Uh, certainly the big events, we watched the Progress launch live a few days ago. And we look forward to watching a Soyuz launch live uh, in, a, in a, another week and a half. Uh, the, for games and special uh, things like that of interest for us, they, they turn those into video files and uplink them for us so we can watch those uh, later at our own time. I, I, for me, I get uh, some television shows sent up as well as uh, Aggie, Aggie games and uh, uh, church sermons from my church in Houston. Okay. Uh, you've been up in space for a while now. What, what, what do you miss most about Texas? Well, gee, I really missed not being home for the summer this year. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I know it's been a brutal summer. Uh, one of the benefits of this particular uh, schedule has been missing out on an entire summer. We went over to, uh, to Russia while it was still a little bit uh, cool in Houston area uh, late last, sp or last spring uh, to go through the final preparations. Uh, what I miss the most, of course, is my family, uh, my wife and my kids and my granddaughter, who I can't wait to see in a few weeks. Yeah, you, you missed the hottest and driest summer uh, on record here in the state, so I don't think you have a lawn anymore, I'm sorry to say. I'm, I'm sure that's true. My family has intentionally not sent any pictures to me. <laughs> uh, so you've had an interesting rotation with the, uh, the progress launch problems. Uh, has it been challenging going back to a three-person crew on the station after being at six for a while? There's pluses and minuses associated with it, uh, certainly. It's, uh, it's very busy uh, because the station requires a certain amount of care and feeding. Uh, once you take care of the care and feeding, which is mandatory, then you get the science. And I know that's not our priority, but the fact is you have to clean the things, replace things, uh, stuff like that. And so we've had our hands full uh, keeping the science load moving forward, and we've done a good job of that. I'm, I'm proud of that. Uh, so there, in ways, it's, you know, there's a little, uh, you don't have to wait for the right piece of equipment when you go to the gym because there's, uh, you know, no lines for the treadmill or for the, uh, the uh, resistive exercise machine. Uh, and so there's a little, some benefits from having fewer people. Some things take a little less time because we just have three. Uh, it's been an enjoyable time uh, uh, for us. We're uh, close friends from three corners of the world, and we've had the chance to spend more time together. Uh, and, uh, you know, but we we'll definitely look forward to the uh, new guys showing up soon. Yeah, at the same time, you mentioned you, you guys spend time together, but it's a big place, so you can, go, you can go quite a while without seeing someone, right, when you're working during the day? We work, uh, often we'll work in different corners or different areas. Uh, there's uh, two of us down here on the U.S. end of the station, if we, you will, Satoshi Furukawa and myself, and we're helping each other a little bit more. Uh, uh, Sergey Volkov spends a good bit of his time down in the Russian segment, which is down back this way behind me. We're in the U.S. lab today. Uh, 
and uh, so we make a point of going down there, uh, you know, and, and having a just having a quick coffee with Sergey, and we get together for lunch and dinner. So we may be working in different areas, but we keep touch with each other. So we all, in, in case of an emergency, it's important to know where people are working, especially if you're not going to be in one of the prime work areas. And right now, Sergey is working down in the progress ship that docked yesterday. So he's uh, he, he let me know that hey, I'm going to be down in the progress. So if anything's if, if you plan on going anywhere, come get me. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the Progress uh, cargo ships, you took an amazing photo, uh, I think it was last week, of a, of a cargo ship burning up in the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, did you think about what was burning up inside that ship when you took the photo? Uh, oh, you bet. I helped pack it. And so it was kind of funny. I, I, I got a series of photos there. Uh, and so it was interesting to see as, as uh, for a, a short amount of time, you could really see some details. The lighting and everything worked out great. And you could see, I mean, big pieces that were, uh, were, were glowing as their own, uh, you know, their own bright spark as, uh, as the ship was coming apart. So that, that was uh, quite interesting. Yeah, you've, uh, you, tell me about your uh, photography background. Are you an amateur photographer, or you just you just have such a great vantage point up there? It's it's easy to get these shots. You, you do a very nice job. Well, thanks, Eric. Uh, no, I'm a hack. I, I I like photography, but I've never had uh, much training outside of what NASA provides to us. But I have a lot of interest in it, particularly the low light um, uh, photography, because it, it it brings out things that you can see once you get in the the cupola and and really light adjust or, or light adapt to the darkness, just as you can when you get away from the city lights and and get away from. Uh, you know, lights even even in Texas, even in the area around Houston, and adjust. And you see a lot more stars after you after you're looking for 20 minutes or so to adjust to the light. So up here, the cameras can do that same thing for us and and capture that view so that we can share it because it's it's really uh, amazing. Particularly, I mean, the city lights uh, and the uh, I mean, the Earth lit by moonlight is is uh, very interesting too, as well as of course the aurora is which was not a real f a significant feature on my previous two space flights. A little green glow on the horizon was about all we got, but man, we have flown through it this time and have been able to capture some of that. It's great. Yeah, those have been some pretty amazing shots as well. Uh, you were on the station before the cupola and after the cupola. What, what kind of a difference does that make in terms of being able to look back at Earth? It really, the, the cupola is, it, I mean, it, it's such a window, and it's, it's it, to me, it's, it's an, an amazing thing. I have a history with it. I was working on the space station redesign back in the early 90s, and the cupola came perilously close to being eliminated from the program. And there was a, 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 an astronaut now deceased named uh, Charles Lacey Veach, who really gave it everything he had to, uh, to fighting the, the fight to make sure everybody understood the value of the cupola, not just for watching the Earth, but to support robotic operations. And I can't imagine reaching out and grabbing the free flyer uh, HTV cargo ship and the future ones that are coming without that direct eyeball view. So it has a very definite operational need, but the uh, the value to the just the human to, to, to see the Earth go by. And, and because of the angles, we can see the stars, too. And uh, that's something that you can't see. The, the, the lab has a window right underneath me. It's primarily dedicated to uh, scientific instruments right now. But even if it wasn't clustered with other cameras, it's, you, can't really see the hor you, can, you can't really see the horizon and certainly can't see the stars. So that's the cupola's really huge benefit. So there have been a couple of successful progress launches since the, the problems. Do you feel confident that the Russians have ironed out the issues that, that with the Soyuz and progress launch vehicles? I believe so, Eric. They, they, with as many successful launches as they've had uh, for many years, it's clearly not a design problem. So it, it goes back to some kind of a process problem. Uh, and they, they went all the way through those. They tore them apart. They rebuilt the engines to make sure there were no questions, no lingering concerns. And, and uh, you know, it's a great successful launch. And I think these launches are going to be some of the, you know, the, the highest probability success launches ever because the every, you know, all attention is on every detail and uh, maybe a, a renewed emphasis 
on on some of the details. Something escaped us somewhere. Uh, that's pretty clear when when a ship goes down like that. But I think uh, think we're in really great shape. The the launches have been flawless, and I look forward to another one in a week and a half. Hey, what have you learned about yourself after after nearly six months in zero gravity? You know, I, I really thought six months, half a year, that is, that's, uh, you know, a huge chunk out of your life. And I thought this would just go on forever. But uh, there, there must be something to Einstein's, uh, you know, theories of relativity, uh, 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 speed and time, because this has gone by in a flash. I can't believe we've been up here five months. There's no way. Uh, and it, it surprises me just how quick the days go by and, and the weeks and months tick by. So, you know, and I, I've enjoyed the opportunity to really dig in and, and live what literally was a childhood dream of living and working on a space station. As some people were dreaming about going to the moon, I really did dream about living on a space station. And so this has uh, been a, just a great thing for me. Well, Mike, have a safe trip home later this month. Thanks very much for the time. Thanks, Eric. Great talking to you. I look forward to seeing you in a few weeks. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Uh, to you, Eric Berger from uh, Houston Chronicle. We appreciate your time today. Station, please stand by while we reconfigure the video and audio comms.